Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about PHP and why people dislike it. So let's get into it. So the question in question was pretty much that. Frederick, can you explain to me why people dislike PHP? And I'm pretty sure that I have answered this before, but hey, repetition is fun. So the short answer is that usually the it's the it's usually the, the three usual suspects here and the three usual suspects is number one it is a loosely typed language or a scripting language which is not that popular with some people the second thing is that it is unperformant under circumstances where you have a high io rate in other words it's not possible well it's uh, it doesn't have first class support for asynchronous work which is a thing for quite a lot of people and third and lastly it is insecure and more insecure than quite a lot of different other other uh, other programming languages and what i mean by being insecure is basically that it has certain features and it's built on certain technology that is fairly easy to exploit let me explain so if we're, if we're going, going to go top to bottom here, the first thing is that it's a scripting language. Now it has, like PHP has added support for a type system to it, but it doesn't really, it's, this is the thing guys, the reason why people hate PHP or dislike it is very similar to why people have this have a prejudice or a problem with JavaScript or things like that. Like guys, I want you to just hear it from me, please, stop listening to these idiots because they are idiots and they will always be idiots they are ignorant people who keep on repeating things that sort of are true and are less and less true the further we go along and what i mean by that is basically that the most most the majority of people who hate javascript hate javascript for reasons that are based on assumptions and knowledge that hasn't been relevant for quite some times for some time. There are still issues with PHP, there are still issues with JavaScript, but there's, guys, if you didn't know it, C++ and C are fucking on, near on the most insecure languages on the planet. There are more problems with C and C++ than you can possibly imagine. These applications that you try to build with these, um, these languages, I mean, these are the suppo supposedly, usually this is what, at least what I find. The people who hate JavaScript and these languages the most are usually C and C++ developers or people like that. But let's be honest here. If we're talking about exploitation and security and things like that, C and C++ are not really that great because they're insecure languages. Hey, ergo, we invent Rust to solve, try to solve that sort of problem. And you have tons of issues with memory leaks and things like this that are specific to that language. And so what, what, I try, what, what I'm trying to say to you here, guys, is that there will always be someone who hates on your language. And you can pretty much ignore it most of the time. Because the only thing that really dictates if there's any real validity or truth to what they're saying is if the language is unusable or that it's not popular. And basically what that means is that Every single language has problems, all of them, no exceptions. Even Go, Go has problems, tons of problems. Rust has problems also. Like there, it doesn't matter which language you pick, Java, C Sharp, Python, there are always pros and cons with everything, with, with everything. So the people who hate on it, hate on it for their reasons, and you may be aware of them more, not because no other language has a problem, but rather because there is a stigma or like there's a community of people who have a history on, of hating on a specific language because of a track record that may not even be relevant anymore, which is the case with PHP, which is the case with JavaScript. If you want to find really, really big problems with other pr programming languages, there's, pl there's plenty to go around. And trust me, C++ and, pl C++ and C are up there together with these languages, if we're talking security as an example. But the primary thing is, as I said, it's loosely typed. And a scripting language that is loosely typed is usually, well, it's not, the, it's not the greatest thing. And the reason is usually because people feel like it's not possible to scale a scripting language, which is also completely false. It's completely false. There is a truth to it. It is 
easier to scale up a system or like a code base to a really, really large size if you have a type system because it makes it less likely that you're going to produce certain problems or you're going to misspell something or you're going to mess up an import or things like that. So there's no discussion that it makes it easier, but making a saying that it's impossible is absolutely false. The second thing is performance. So PHP has a threading system, but and so you can run things in parallel, but you're not really going to be able to squeeze as much performance out of it if you want to do asynchronous work, such as if you were to work in Node or same other sorts of things. So if you're going to do something that has like a fairly heavy workload or things like that, it's PHP is a very useful useful way of doing that because you can multi-thread it. Now you technically you can do that in JavaScript these days as well, but that is one of the things as well that people feel like, oh no, if I'm gonna make a application that I don't know does high frequency stuff, like you're going to build something that is absolutely like bleeding edge as fast as humanly possible. And for some reason, everybody believe quite a lot of people believe that that is the most important thing when you're building web applications, which is also not true. It's not true even a little bit, but the fanboys and the forum people who seem to have a fraction of the knowledge that they need act as if this is the case. And any decent professional will know that this is not the case. What you usually do when you talk about performance is that you evaluate your pros and your cons. And then if you find that, wow, there's a big, there's a bottleneck here, or you profile that this is a performance issue right here, or that you have a use case where performance is a major issue, then you optimize for that, for, uh, you optimize for performance. You don't just blurted out that, oh, we're just going to be about performance. I mean, there are so many cases and so many companies out there that use PHP at the largest, largest scale. Facebook would be one example. How many applications do you think that uses Go are at the same sort of scale? Now, there are applications that, that are very performant and there are applications that are very popular. What are you going to optimize for? Can, it's there. There is no, as I as I've said, guys. There is no logic and reason to this. It's just ignorant people arguing over things that are true under the right circumstances, and then they make that the whole truth. And it's not the whole truth. Lastly, security. Now, security is an interesting thing. Like I think when it comes to PHP, I you may you can correct me here if you want, but. I'm pretty sure that there is no other web language that depend on and related technologies that have as many exploits as PHP. And it is the hacker's favorite language. Well, not to build things that's usually Python or C or something like that, but, or C++, but when it comes to exploitation and finding ways to exploit a web server, PHP is a very popular, it's a, it has a lot of exploits. Apache has a lot of exploits, and because usually you have something like a LAMP stack or some or a WAMP stack, which basically means Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. That's usually the stack that quite a lot of people use when they're working with PHP. And all of these different technologies, they have very common exploits, or they have they have very famous exploits at the very least. So there's quite a lot of room to be exploited in some fashion and other issues such as since it's a scripting language you basically run your you read your files directly from the file system when you when you run your web server which is another attack vector where you can do remote code execution as an example where i get you to i somehow i get your web server to let's say you have a file upload on your web page and if i can get you to let's say i can upload a picture or an image or something like that and all I have to do there is basically to, instead of giving you an image when I upload it to your server, I give you a PHP script instead. Then I can actually execute that PHP script as part of the web server. And then I can, then now I have remote, co remote access, I can gain remote access to your system because the Apache server will actually execute that instead of just uploading it as an image. This is less of a problem if you have a compiled language or something like that, but it's still possible to exploit in a similar sort of fashion. It's just that people feel that because of PHP history, 
uh, PHP history that uh, and being associated with all of these sort of exploits, they feel like it's an insecure language. And to some degree, I will I will admit that that is the case. But uh, as I've said, as I said earlier, if you look at how e how buffer overflow attacks and memory exploitations work, and that's another way of attacking a system. Well, then uh, the most susceptible languages for that would be C and C plus plus. I would argue. So it comes down to pros and cons. So what I want you to take away from this is that number one, stop listening to these people who keep on telling you that a language is shit because it's just bad or because it can't be used or blah, 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 blah. Use one and only one metric to determine if a language has viability or not. And that is its adoption rate. That's the only thing that matters. And it will always be the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter if you have a C or C++ programmer or a Haskell programmer or an f -sharp programmer or a Scala programmer. It doesn't matter how cool they are. If they tell you that PHP is a shit language because it's just, I, then just question it because PHP is well among the most broadly adopted languages in the world. And it's a hell of a lot more popular, uh, popular than some of the cooler languages. But usually the first thing that people have a problem with is that it's loosely typed because scaling a loosely typed system or like a scripting with a scripting language is harder. It's not impossible. It can be done and before you, you can build very serious things with it, but it is harder. Second thing is it's less performant than the bleeding edge, cutting edge languages or the like the most high performance languages. Quite a lot of languages are slower, but it is a factor for a lot of people that this is uh, this is an issue. For most, most times they're just worrying themselves over something that doesn't even exist as a problem yet, but it is a valid concern. Lastly, security-wise PHP has quite a lot of exploits, so you need to make sure that you, are, you keep your version numbers up, you need to make sure that you update frequently, and you need to make sure that you follow really good security practices. Now these things are true for every language, it's just that in PHP it's almost a little, it's at least as important because of the nature of how the language actually works. But if you follow these practices, there's no reason for you not to use it. Have a great day.